through the carbonate, that's how I got free. Jump it back off because there's no stopping me. Postmodern player, sample tastic, flows it frastic. I get drastic, hey, watch the plastic. Yo, I name check and leave you drastic. This is Spencer with The MacGuffin, and today I'm joined by the director and co writer of The Place Beyond the Pines, Derek San France. Just want to make sure I'm getting that right. Got it right. Uh, you might know him previously from Blue Valentine, which just came out a few years ago. And way back, what was it? Brother Tide? Brother Tide, yeah. It was 98 or so? Yes. Okay. Did you see that? No. No. I, no I, one I, did. I want to see it now. Is it on Netflix or anything? No. You should no. get on that. Like, how could it not be? Like... Not many people saw it. It's, well, it seems like, you know, how they go back and, like, put, like, the, the like, um, Jesse Eisenberg or somebody who's mm. in the minute movie for, like, five minutes. They put him on the new poster and stuff. Like, they could easily do that with you now that you've had a couple of movies that come out to sort of big. A release. few more movies and hopefully it'll come out. Yeah. <laughs> kind of stingy looking, if it takes that many I'm movies. I'm looking for, yeah, yeah. It'll see the light of day. It can wait a little bit longer, though, maybe. So, The Place Beyond the Pines is your latest film. It's coming out April 5th. It's... I mean, I don't even know how to describe it. Honestly, like, I didn't even really fully understand, just looking at the poster and the trailer and stuff, what I was getting into. I mean, it's sort of, I, don't, I mean, I don't know how much we want to say. It's kind of a three-act story, which I guess everyone is, mm. but not necessarily the three acts that most people might expect. Uh, stars Ryan Gosling, Bradley Cooper, was it Dane DeHaan? DeHaan? DeHaan, yeah. Um, each with a very significant role in and of itself. It's... It's a pretty interesting story, and I mean, I guess sort of one of the first things I want to talk about is, I don't, I don't know what your sort of idea when you make films is, but I mean, Blue Valentine obviously dealt with sort of like, you know, reality and dysfunction in relationships, and there's a certainly a degree of that in this movie as well. Is there something that you like about working in the gray, you know, mm. area that really speaks to you or is there a reason why you're not like i want to direct thor 2 or something like that yeah um yeah i mean uh, uh cassavetes had a great uh line in killing of a chinese bookie where uh, uh ben gazzara says what's my truth is your falsehood what's your falsehood is my truth and vice versa and i like uh you know i don't think anything is 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 so simple as uh as some stories are made out to be, you know, I've, I, uh, I like making movies about family. At least, uh, my, my last three films have been about family. Brother Tide is about brothers. Uh, you know, Blue Valentine is about husbands and wives, and this is about fathers and sons. Um, I like families in the movie because, in movies, because I feel like families are a place where secrets are kept, you know, and mm. where there's a great intimacy. Uh, between people. You really get to know people in your family. It's not always what goes outside your doors, but you know inside a house what's going on. Uh, you know the, you know, a truth and honesty to what's going on in the situation. And I think the movies are the same. I think movies are a great place for secrets and for intimacies. Mm -hmm. And I like, uh, I, there's nothing I like to do more than sit in a dark movie theater and be a voyeur, you know, watch, watch up on the screen. And I feel like if I can enter these people's worlds, and feel uh, feel like I'm not always supposed to be there. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. These moments totally, are, are yeah. private. There's not things that, you know. When I was a kid, uh, you know, I remember I always looked around on on my 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 family's wall or my friends' family's wall and seeing all these like smiling family portraits, but. <laughs> Like the families weren't always smiling all the time. Mm. I didn't understand that my, f my friend Matt's house, why his, he had a picture of his family uh, smiling up on the wall when all I heard them do mm. was argue all the time. And uh, so, so I wanted to make movies that, uh, you know, I, I, I always tried to take pictures early on when I was a little kid of like people fighting and stuff, you know, getting in arguments. And I never smiled for family pictures when I was a kid either. I mean, I mean, one of the things that immediately pops in my mind is the whole concept of cinema verite. I mean, I don't know mm. if I necessarily say your films are cinema verite, but yeah. they definitely sort of play into elements of that, where you sort of do feel like a fly on the wall at times, you know, to these sort of secrets and whatnot. Yeah. Is that something that you intentionally try and do? I mean, I'm not saying well, you're trying to do like, you know. F I, I, I kind of reject the term fly on a wall because I feel like a fly on the wall, in a fly is 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 a bother is bothersome do you know what i mean <laughs> whenever i hear that term fly on the wall it's like it's you a pest kill a fly. you want to kill a fly you want to get a fly out of the uh -huh. way they're bothering you they're spying on you where whereas you know in my films and in great cinema verite like wise men or something 
um, you know, Wiseman, uh, Frederick Wiseman has an ability to, uh, he's engaging with the people who mm. he's shooting. He's a part of their world and they're a part of, his presence is accepted and he's part of it. You can feel his physicality there. And when I'm trying to make films, I, I, I take a lot of inspiration from documentary films mm. from the Maisel brothers and Wiseman. Well, and you've done some documentary I've work, done a bunch. You? Yeah, I've done a bunch. It was kind of my bread and butter for like 12 years mm. when I was trying to get Blue Valentine made. And, and, uh, anyway, I like that engage. I like that relationship that happens in, a in, uh, not in just observation, but ex experience. You know, we're not just sitting back from action and watching it. For instance, in a place beyond the pines, there's you know these like for instance, you could just take a car, uh, like one of the motorcycle chases. It's not not like we're seeing it from the sidewalk and just panning with it. You know, mm -hmm. the, you're actually in a cop car and you're actually experiencing it. There's a visceral quality to it. You're you really live with these characters. You know, you're not. Even though sometimes we see it from behind, you know, we're kind of stalking, you know, characters in a way, we're still with them. We're like they're ghosts on their shoulder. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And, I they, know, and they know we're there. You I know? mean, especially the opening shot where you're following Ryan Gosling through yeah. the fair and stuff like that. Yeah. And I mean, one of the things that I, I mean, I guess this is sort of a, a general question. <laughs> I don't know if you'll ever have hear, hear this comparison before or will again but one of the things that immediately popped to my mind while watching the movie was Cloud Atlas mm. in the sense that sort of the film felt like it was speaking to the notion that you know actions have consequences mm -hmm. do you actually you know try and make your films have messages or do you mm. just try and keep it open to individuals interpretations of what's going on yeah I'm not a message filmmaker at all I don't uh, I don't think of uh the screen as my s pedestal to uh I actually when i watch a film and i and and i'm told a message mm. by a filmmaker i always have a bit of an allergy to that you mm. know i i like having my own thoughts you know as a as a viewer and i like films that respect me enough to not have to manipulate me for every inch of the film, you know, and kind of respect me enough to have my own, you know, th you know, to take away, the, you know, from the film what I will. Um, and so I'm always trying to do that as a filmmaker. You know, I always consider myself an audience member before I'm a filmmaker. Hmm. So I'm trying to make the films that I want to see. Um, you know, to me, uh, The Place Beyond the Pines is all about legacy. It's a deeply personal film for me about uh, becoming a father again and thinking mm. all about the things that I was going to pass on to my children and also thinking about the things that I was born with, you know. Mm. Uh, you know, And yes, choices. Choices that were made by generations before me that still... Uh, have reverberations in my life and thinking about my kids life and thinking about the choices that I will make that'll stay with them and think and just you know you know really wishing that my kids could make their own choices and just you know have a clean slate in a way but that's um, not necessarily but that's possible. Not, it's not possible. Yeah. So what what is possible though is evolution and so that's what this movie is really about. It's about evolution, darwinism, it's about uh you know moving forward, survival you know, how the species survives, how a, how a bloodline survives or not. And, uh, you know, but then, you know, people will bring into it their own, their own personal experience. And the movie itself is an experience for people to kind of, uh, uh, you know, th that, that will or will not resonate with people afterwards, you know. <laughs> I, I guess this is a weird comparison to think about. Do you kind of think of it sort of like a Rorschach image mm. where sort of, you, you you put it out there and people just interpret it through their own sort of prism, you know, their yeah. own families, histories, their own sort of experiences, that sort yeah. of thing. Yeah, I appreciate that when that happens. I mean, look, I had a lot of people, you know, who saw this movie who came up to me and like really relate. You know, there's a lot of characters to relate with. Some, you know, the the Bradley Cooper character is a, is a very modern man, I think, mm. you know, and uh, I've had a lot of uh, a lot of men uh talk to me after the movie and telling tell me that they you know that after seeing the movie that they had to call you know they called their ex-wife and just asked them you know ask their ex-wife you know it's not i know it's not my weekend tonight but can i can i come pick them up and just spend the night with them you well, know it, just to be with their kid again you know something that yeah. they felt they neglected in their life 
I mean, it's 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 definitely true of Blue Valentine too, because it's mm-hmm. funny. Like we're in the theater before the screening, and people are talking about Blue Valentine. It was interesting to sort of see the division of like fifty people, fifty fifty, who are like, "Oh yeah, I'm on Ryan Gosling's side. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm on Michelle Williams' yeah. side." So it's so yeah. clear to see people, you know, putting themselves in that position and putting their experiences there. Yeah. See, and some people's critique of Blue Valentine was that it didn't tell you enough. It didn't tell you. Everything that happened didn't tell you exactly what to think and feel or describe every person. But to me, that's the be- that's the beauty of it. To me, it was a it's a movie about the mystery. It's the it's that uh, song, baby, baby, where did our love go? You know, that song ends in a question mark, and I wanted my mo- uh, blue to be that question mark. And that was the biggest compliment to that movie is when people started arguing in the theater afterwards. And I mean, I, I think you spoke about it already saying yeah. you know you have an allergy to films that tell you how to feel. And I, I mean, I, like don't get me wrong, look, I just watched that film, Big Miracle, about the whales yesterday yeah, yeah, yeah. and i enjoyed and it you, you know I, 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 it's a very sappy happy yeah. movie so i enjoy that but i agree that there's an element of like hollywood that's just sort of in some ways stifling to letting people have film stories where it makes you think and sort of interpret it through whatever you want i, I mean it, there is an element that we have to like everything has to have a happy ending you know this guy has to be the good guy this guy has to be the bad guy and i like that your film's really keep everyone sort of like in the gray and that they're all good and they're all bad and there's no just yeah. there's no clear like hero or villain or whatever i think that really is a sort of a nice departure from a lot of the stuff that you know the studio system tends to put out i mean yeah. do you try and stay yeah. away from the studio system because of that well, i don't try to stay away from the studio system i just haven't at, at this point found you know a script uh you know, in the studio system that I, that I want to make. Um, uh, you know, I am, I, 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 I can only really relate to human stories at this point, you know? I do love, uh, you know, I, I grew up though watching horror movies. I watched uh, Creep Show was like uh, my film when I was a kid that I watched like so many times. And I love all movies, uh, you know? I, I love, uh, you know, I love, uh, being swept away in, uh, in, in in stories i just you know i like to uh yeah and i i I respond more to the gray area in 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 characters and in stories because that's that's how i I, those are the people that i've met sometimes when i go to a movie and i see these perfect people up on the screen and they have beautiful skin and they have beautiful teeth and they speak these words they have like game show host teeth and then they say these sentences that are just so perfectly put together and they know exactly what they want and uh it's so clear but to me in my life the people that i've met my own experience hasn't been like that Mm. you know my experience is that i'm i meet people who are uh who are wrestling with 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 personal demons with uh uh, you know, insecurities with dreams, which with fears, you know what I mean? With a lot of human ex- experiences. And I think, I think one of the traditions of Hollywood filmmaking has become this kind of film, uh, you know, where, where, where humans are made in the image of gods, you know, they're, they're people, they're these screen idols that you stare up at and, and you, you know, whenever I leave a movie and I see all these perfect people, I always feel a little lonely afterwards. I wonder like, why, why is my life not like that? So I, 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 you know, for so many years with Blue Valentine, I couldn't get it made. People said, no one wants to see that. You know, they want the fantasy. Um, but I actually think that sometimes a movie that shows people in all their flaws and all their glory of their flaws of their humanity i think it to me when i see that it makes me feel it's comforting to know that there's people up there that look like me that i mean i know ryan gosling and bradley cooper oh, and yeah. ava mendez are incredibly sure but but that's the thing like when ava came to the audition she came wearing no makeup wearing a baggy shirt big hoop ear- earrings her hair a mess and it meant so much to me that she was trying to make herself look unattractive trying to be vulnerable for me that i told her she didn't even have to audition i just asked her to drive me around in her car and take me to the you know how she grew up in <laughs> and to know who she was as a human being not That's as cool. a perfection you know and the last thing i'll say about that i think the thing that makes us interesting unique is our flaws not what's perfect about us. I think we're all separated. Uh, we're all defined in a lot of ways by our flaws. That's why you got to love people like Paul Giamatti, who's made yes. an entire career of playing flawed people. Yes. Yeah. One of the things that you sort of brought up, though, is you've had sort of the opportunity to work with some 
great actors. I mean, Ryan Gosling, Michelle Williams, Ryan Gosling here again, Bradley Cooper, Ava Mendez, Dane DeHaan. What is it like sort of working with these people and how do you sort of get the best out of them? I mean, obviously these are very talented people, but I mean, as a director, I'm sure you want to sort of push them to be their best. What is sort of your approach to doing that? I think uh, the intangible in filmmaking is trust. Uh, you have to trust each other. It's a collaboration of artists and, uh, you know, when I cast an actor, I trust them completely. When Ava came to the audition and she was dressed that way, uh, you know, to me, I believed that she would go, that she would go far uh, in the movie for me. And then when I drove around with her in the car, I got to know who she was as a human being. And I could trust, I could trust that human mm. in my movie and I could trust her, you know, her, you know, how far she wanted to go. So it's, it's trust. There's other things that happen too. I make, uh, you know, whenever I, you know, whenever I hire an actor to be in a movie, I always ask them uh, to do two things. I ask them to surprise me and I ask them to fail. I ask them to, uh, uh, you know, so so that way, you know, I always get a little disappointed when they do the script, you know. Um, I I want it to be alive. I'm looking for life, you know. I'm looking for behavior on the screen. I'm looking for mistakes. To me, those are the best moments, you know. Not again, it plays into the perfection. So, I mean, and I mean, obviously, you were one of the co-writers of this and Blue yeah. Mountain. Um, do you sort of think of? or enjoy improvisation because yeah. it seems like that would be very much within your alley of sort of making it real sort mm -hmm. of making stuff that's not necessarily perfect yeah. maybe perhaps more natural given the situation do you really encourage that on your sets yeah. or yeah i mean that's why i say i don't if they do the script if the actors do the script i'm always disappointed we always do do the script eventually just to be uh, safe yeah but, but usually at the end you know um you know, one thing I always tell my actors too is I always, I always set up a democracy of ideas, where uh, if they have any idea, anything at all, we will do it. Mm. We'll try it. And if I have, conversely, if I have any idea, we'll do it. We'll try it. And what that does is it creates a, a culture of non-judgment on the set. So no one's think you, you can't have an idea on my set and and have it be turned down. That's cool. uh, so ideas are the most valuable thing. And I've had it. I remember on Blue Valentine, there was an experience where Ryan and Michelle, after they had gone to the uh, abortion clinic, and there was a scene with them on the bus. And Ryan thought Michelle should be. Ryan and Michelle thought that she should sit in his lap. And to me, I didn't. I didn't think that was the right idea. I thought they should be sitting next to each other, you know. And uh, I said, okay, fine. Do a take with you on with Michelle sitting on your lap, and do a take with you next to each other. So we didn't have to argue about it, you know. When I went into the editing room, the one where she was sitting on his lap mm -hmm. won. And so I always I, that was a huge lesson to me to just be open, you know, openness to ideas, democracy of ideas allows, you know, because when you have actors like like Ryan and and Bradley and Ray Liotta and Rose Byrne, there's like and Ben Mendelsohn and Emery Cohen and all these people, like they have their their magic people, and you have to trust them, and so you they come and they're going to come with ideas. It's such a gift. And then I get all you know, I get the credit for the ideas. You know, ben, so. ben Mendelsohn was actually one of my favorite parts because I was sitting there oh, yeah. thinking, like, if Ben Mendelsohn is the voice of reason, you know yeah. shit's gone sideways. Because yeah. yeah. that yeah. guy, like, watching him in films like Animal Kingdom is yeah. terrifying. Like, yeah. so to see him be a nice guy was kind of a very pleasant departure from that. Yeah. For you personally, though, what kind of goals do you have going forward? Obviously, you've got this coming out, so you're going to be promoting that. Do you, I mean, do you have some sort of vision of where you want your career to go, or are you just sort of like playing it by ear at this point? Or no, I'm just, uh, you know, uh, you know, I want to make big movies. I want to make movies that are classics. I want to make movies that you uh, that that are watched, that people are watch and love. And I don't think uh, I don't I don't necessarily consider my taste to be. Um, you know, overly artsy fartsy. Do you know what I mean? Or yeah, I don't you know, think I think, so. I think I think uh, I think anyone can really love the movies that I'm making. Um, uh, you know, I just want and I love movies as much as anyone I've ever met. You know, so I just want to make the movies that I want to see in the movie theater. And at you know the and I, I tell you what, my ultimate goal is in life is longevity. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to get better. 
uh, one of my favorite filmmakers is uh, Elim Klimov, uh, the Russian filmmaker mm. who made Come and See in his, I think he was in his 70s. Wow. And to me, that example of, uh, you know, making, you know, you know continue evolution again, continuing to grow, con con continuing to get better, you know, I just, you know, I hope every film I make is, uh, you know, I hope the last film I make, I should say, is the best film I make. You know, I'm not, and I and I hope that's like somewhere in Maybe my nineties. Yeah. I mean, I mean, that's one of those things that, like, I always talk about, like my friends about Christopher Nolan is that you, I mean, there's a certain point where you've raised the bar so high so yeah. early on that it's it's going to be tough to top it every single time. So I definitely think that that concept of a steady growth is probably the best way to approach the situation, if possible. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I guess I guess you can't you know stop if you if you sit down after this and you write. Casablanca 2 or something like that. Yeah. Obviously it is what it is, but you yeah. know, it's it's what you try for. Yeah. Uh so this movie is coming out April 5th. In terms of you personally, is there anywhere people can keep track of you? Do you do Twitter or Facebook or any of that sort of stuff? I don't or? do any social media. No, just cuz I don't uh you know, I cuz I really value my privacy. Uh, my privacy mm -hmm. and uh and uh you know, so hard nowadays you get you know there's so many ways to get b to be gotten uh, a hold of you know like i'm just talking oh, like yeah. you get you know you have to check i was on facebook for a little while and then i was like getting up in the morning checking my phone <laughs> checking my email uh -huh. checking my facebook and it's like and it's, it's uh, a lot uh, yeah, and it's just a lot of like checking and constantly checking to see who's like in messages and i you know i'm trying to uh can like keep a face to face relationships with people like especially with my kids you know and my wife and i want to be there with them as they grow up and i want to watch them and i don't want to be gone all the, always yeah. uh, you know always uh, pulled into uh and you know this other world oh, no, I totally not understand. to be judgmental no, no, I totally but understand. i also i'm yeah. bumping into people all the time they're walking down the street with the phones you know they're looking at their phones and they're not looking up uh, you know, the, the, the thing that bothers me the most is just sort of that concept of being <laughs> instantly accessible at all times. That's sort of like, yes. I, I don't know if that's an improvement for the world. Sure, I mean, it's good to be able to get hold of someone for an emergency or something like that. But the expectation that people seem to have with the, the, the invention of the cell phone, that everyone needs to be immediately available at any given moment yeah. because they have a cell phone is just sort of overwhelming. So yeah. I, I understand where you're going from. Yeah. Um, well, I wish you luck with the place beyond the pines Thank and you. whatever comes next. Thank, Thank you so you. much, Derek. Thank you and, very uh, much. Check out more interviews at MacGuffinPodcast.com.